pumpkins are Surprise so pumpkins. very special. Carve into a scary fright for trick or treaters in the night. Everybody. Hello children, welcome to this online field trip. I'm Sam and today I'm on a farm in Norfolk, which is in the east of the country. Now this part of the country is very flat and there are lots and lots of farms around here. And on this particular farm where I am today, they grow squashes and in particular, a type of squash that many of us are going to be enjoying this time of year, pumpkins. Now this is our guide for today, this is David. Hello children. Hello David. Now David is in charge of all the squashes here on the farm and also making sure that these pumpkins get to us in time for Halloween as well. Very important job. Um, how long have you been farming for then David? We've been farming here in Norfolk for about 25 years now and growing squashes and pumpkins all that time. Wow, so how many would you grow in a, in a year say? Pumpkins for Halloween, we grow about 3 million. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is so, so good. Um, and we just haven't got David with us as well. We also have Alan with us today as well. And Alan is going to be carving an amazing creation into one of David's pumpkins. Hello, Alan. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Can't wait to see how you get on. We're going to be going back to Alan throughout the course of the lesson to see how his pumpkin is coming on. Um, so David, what are we going to see on the farm today? Today we're going to have a look at all the different varieties that we grow and also we'll go and have a look outside and see how pumpkins are harvested. Oh, it's going to be a great one this is, isn't it? So let's meet our children that we have uh, taking part today. Uh, let's go over to St Thomas's School in Winchelsea. Hello children. Hello. Hello. Hello Mrs Westhead's class, thank you so much for taking part. Let's go to Toffwood School now in Norfolk. Hello, Miss Major's class. Thank you very much for taking part today. And let's go over to Woodlands Primary Academy in Norfolk, where Mr. Handley's class is taking part. Hello, children. Hello. Lovely to have you with us today. And finally, Beacon School, um, which is in Walsall, where Miss Stokes' class is taking part. Hello everybody, great to have you with us. We also need to say a big hello to Kersey C of E School, which is in Ip Ipswich, which is Miss Fenn's class is there taking part with us today. And also to Ben Weavis School in the Highlands where Miss Ross's class is taking part as well. It's great to have you all watching and learning with us today. It is going to be a really, really good lesson. Uh, first of all, I think David, we need to um, learn a little bit more about the um, family of fruit mm -hmm. um, that pumpkins are part of. It's a squash family, isn't it? It is. It's a squash family, but all of these belong to the cucurbit family, which even includes marrows, courgettes like these, and all these different squashes here. Okay, they're lovely. So, so we've got some butternut squash here. Yeah. We've got a really bizarre white one here. Is this a pumpkin? It is a pumpkin. It's a, what we call a ghost pumpkin, which is white on the outside and, and very scary for Halloween. Great, perfect for carving for Halloween. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> we also have red ones, orange ones, of course, and these massive ones for, for Halloween. Fantastic, what a great array. So you, you do all these on the farm, you grow all of these? We do, yes, yeah, we have all these different squashes here, which these are more for eating and these are more for carving. We also have very small ones, oh. this size too. So if you, t if you were to eat this, it wouldn't taste that good? It's, it's, these are not as tasty as these smaller squash types are. Okay, okay. And you did hear me right, because I did refer to squashes as fruit, because they are a fruit. We know this because they grow from a flower. Um, they have seeds like an apple. Um, but I think sometimes we get confused, don't we, David? Because, of course, they are a fruit, but we tend to refer to them as vegetables because yeah. we, we cook them in our savoury food. We so do. it's quite an easy mistake, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. They are very tasty in food. They are. <laughs> okay, so um, I know lots of our schools have been learning um, all about squashies. So let's go over and find out some facts. Let's go to St Thomas's School just to see um, what you have learned already. Hello, um, it needs learnt something about pumpkins. It takes six months for a pumpkin to grow. That's a great fact. Is, is that right, David? It takes six months for a pumpkin to grow? That's about right, yes. We plant them in April and then they're ready again for, for Halloween at the end, the end of October. Great learning, really good learning there. Let's get another fact. Um, this is Bo. It, you can use pumpkin in soup as well. 
that's a really, really good fact. You can use uh, pumpkins in soup as well. You can, yeah, very tasty soup. Really tasty, really good this time of year when it's getting a bit colder outside. It's nice to have a nice warm bowl of pumpkin soup. Do we have another fact? We do, it's, it's Henry. Um, you need to put the whole 1.8 um, for the seed to go in. 1.8 centimetres? Yes, centimetres. The seed has to go down 1.8 centimetres. That's a really good fact. So the seeds need to go down 1.8 centimetres in the ground for them yes. to grow. Yes, the children really have been doing their homework. They have. That's, that's, that's spot on, yeah. <laughs> I think they're after a job. Yes. Yeah. You might, there might be a few people coming to work be. on your farm be, in the yes. future. Uh, amazing facts there. You obviously have been learning all about pumpkins. I also know as well that some of you have been growing your own pumpkins and carving pumpkins too as well. So we can't wait to see those later on in the lesson. Talking of carving pumpkins, I bet you're wondering how Alan is getting on so let's find out what Alan has been doing and what he's been designing while we've been learning all about pumpkins how are you getting on Alan I'm doing fine just doing this uh, Halloween scene for you a haunted house so it's a bit spooky for Halloween fantastic spooky for Halloween absolutely perfect can't wait to see what the finished pumpkin looks like at the end of the lesson okay it's time for a video now and this is all about how the pumpkins here grow on the farm how do pumpkins grow? Pumpkins, butternut squashes, courgettes and patty pans are all types of squash. In fact, there are more than 100 varieties of squash and they're all good to eat. People have been growing and eating squashes for as long as 10,000 years, almost as long ago as the end of the last ice age. It's probably the first plant that humans started growing as a crop. So when you eat a squash, you're eating the same food as one of our Stone Age ancestors. On this farm, they grow pumpkins for Halloween and for eating. These pumpkins are planted out in May and June to make sure they are ready to send to the shops in time for early October. The baby pumpkin plants are grown from seed in a greenhouse for about four weeks. When they are large enough, the farmers use a tractor to plant them in the fields. The plants are placed in the ground this far apart. Because the leaves and pumpkins can grow really big, they need plenty of room. The plants start to grow sprouting vines. The vines spread across the field and after six to eight weeks they flower. The flowers will turn into the pumpkins once they have been pollinated. On this farm, the soil is really fertile and holds lots of water. In fact, there is enough rainfall and water in the soil to give the thirsty pumpkin plants all that they need. After another four weeks, Small pumpkins appear on the vines where the flowers used to be. It takes a further four to six weeks for them to grow to the right size for picking. In September, this farm starts to pick pumpkins that are between 500 grams and 10 kilograms. That's a really big pumpkin. The team go through the field cutting the pumpkins from the vines. Then they use a special machine called a harvesting rig. The pumpkins are picked, put on a conveyor belt, then washed. And then transported to the polytunnels and glass houses for storage. They handle the pumpkins very delicately because they can be easily damaged. When the stores are ready for their pumpkins, they are packed into crates and sent to the supermarkets. Now they're ready for you to buy, carve and cook. Well, we hope you enjoyed that video. As you can see, we've moved further into the farm now and we're in the middle of the field, surrounded by pumpkins that are ready to be harvested. And you may notice behind me this giant machine, which is actually washing the pumpkins, isn't it, David? Yes, it is, yes, yeah. We pick them up and put them onto the elevator here. They go up and then through a washing tunnel, which just sprays 
jets of water very fast onto the pumpkins to clean all the mud off. <laughs> if you've ever been through a car wash, perhaps at a petrol station with your parents, it's like that. It's like a little mini one of those. It is. Uh, how does it not damage the... Well, there is only it's just jets of water. There's no brushes or anything mechanical inside. It's just water sprayed on the pumpkins from all directions. Wow, that's fascinating. Did you have to do it by hand before? Yes, we did. This yes, was yes. We now have three machines like this, but previous to that, everything was was done by hand. Great. And how many would you wash per day? Well, we do about two thousand an hour through this machine. Wow, that is yeah. such a lot, yes. isn't it? That's maybe five times faster than than doing it by hand. Okay, so they need to be washed because I guess there's a lot of mud on the ground. Yes, there is, yeah. When the pumpkins are, are wet this time of the year, the mud sticks to them, so we need to wash it off before they go into store. And so where do they go once they're in the back of the machinery now? Yeah, once they've done, they come off the machine here into the wooden boxes and then they go and are laid out in the glass house and polytunnels. Great, and then they head to the local store ready for us to and, buy for Halloween. Uh, yes, and then they're packed for supermarkets, yes. Fantastic stuff. I think we may have some questions from our schools now, David, because we've been learning so much. Let's go over to St Thomas's School. Do we have any questions from any of your, uh, your class, Mrs Westhead? Um, how many different types of pumpkins are there, do you know? That's a really great question. Uh, David, how many different types of pumpkin are there? There are well over 100 different varieties of pumpkins wow. that range from very tiny pumpkins, as we saw inside, to massive pumpkins, which can weigh anything up to half a tonne. Fantastic. Wow, I didn't know there was that many. Uh, let's get another question from St Thomas's School. This is Bluey. How big is the biggest pumpkin you have ever grown? Oh, that's a great question. How big is the biggest pumpkin ever, David? Well, it changes every year because farmers are growing larger and larger pumpkins, but the biggest one is, we think it's over half a tonne. Half a tonne? Yes, yeah, so over 500 kilos. That would be huge. I mean, it is huge, yes. What kind of size would that be, the well, size of a... Well, that can be nearly two metres across, so, <gasps> yeah, wow. very large. Wow, that is, that would take you quite a long time to uh, either carve that or <laughs> it eat would, it, wouldn't it? Would, yes. <laughs> great questions from St Thomas's. Let's go over to Toffwood School now. Do we have any questions from your class, Miss Nadru? Why are pumpkins called pumpkins? That's a really great question, actually. Why are pumpkins called pumpkins, David? Well, the word pumpkin actually comes from the, the Greek word meaning pepon, which means large melon. Oh, so. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's a great fact. I'm going to remember that one. Uh, do we have another question from Toffwood School? Why is pumpkins orange? Why are pumpkins orange? That's a really good question. So why are pumpkins orange, David? Um, well, traditionally the colour for, harving, for carving pumpkins has always been orange, but now we are developing new varieties which are red and white as we saw inside. Great. But I think orange will always be the, the most popular colour. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same, would it, it would really? It makes the scariest faces. Fantastic, great questions there, Toffwood, as well. Uh, it's time for another video now, and hopefully this is going to inspire you to cook your pumpkins, because of course they are delicious and they're really good for you as well. So here are a couple of recipes that you can try at home. How to cook your pumpkin. It's lots of fun to carve pumpkins at Halloween, but did you know that a pumpkin's flesh and its seeds are really yummy to eat? Pumpkins are really good for you. One 80 gram portion counts as one of your five a day. It's also a source of vitamin C, which helps your immune system and gives you healthy bones, teeth and gums. The flesh of a pumpkin is delicious when it's roasted. To make roasted pumpkin, you will need a pumpkin, a spoon, a roasting tray, some seasoning and a small amount of oil. Make sure you get a grown-up to help you with this. First, scoop out the insides with a spoon. Peel your pumpkin and cut into chunks. Make sure you save the seeds as we are going to cook them later. Put the pumpkin on a greased baking tray. To add flavour, sprinkle on a spice like nutmeg or a herb such as sage. Cook the pumpkin at 200 degrees Celsius for 30 to 40 minutes until it's soft. Roasted pumpkin is tasty on its own, but you could add it to a curry or even make soup from it. While your pumpkin's roasting, you can prepare and cook the tasty seeds you've saved. To do this you'll need a colander, 
a tea towel, a pan of water, a spoon and a roasting tray. Take your seeds and give them a good wash in the colander to remove all the strings and gooey flesh. When clean, put the seeds into a pan of boiling water and boil for 10 minutes. Use a spoon to scoop out the seeds. Dry them and put them on a greased baking tray. Roast them in the oven for 5 minutes. Once they have cooled down, they are ready to eat. A carved pumpkin looks amazing at Halloween, but don't forget the flesh and the seeds taste too good to just throw in the bin. Yummy, and if you do try those recipes at home, make sure you have an adult with you too as well. Um, David, what's your favorite way of uh, eating pumpkin? Well, I really like eating the pumpkin seeds like these. They're very tasty and um, yeah, make a really nice snack. Yeah, they are really good for you. I like to, to eat, pick on those throughout the day. Yes. My favorite is pumpkin soup though. We did yes. mention it earlier. Uh, yeah. It is really tasty this nice. time of year <laughs> as well. What's the difference between the pumpkins that we saw being cooked there and the pumpkins for Halloween? Yeah, they're generally the larger varieties are for carving for Halloween, where squashes like these are much more tasty for cooking. This is an onion squash, which is in the shape of an onion, but still tastes very sweet for soups and roasting. Lovely, so the smaller the sweeter is generally the rule. Okay, well, we had some great questions from our schools earlier, so let's go to our other two schools now and get some questions for you, David, put you on the spot. Let's go to uh, Woodlands Primary Academy. Do we have any questions at all, Mr Handley? How did the first pumpkin grow? Because you can't just magic up a seed. That's a really, really good question. How did the first pumpkin grow? when you can't just magic up a seed? You can't, no. It's just developed from other variety things, I believe. Uh, pumpkins originated in Central America and were used for all sorts of things, even for making vessels for drinking and eating out of, to mix the insides, roast it, and then eat the centre of the pumpkin. Oh, wow, that is a real... Maybe you could do some pumpkin soup inside a pumpkin. Yes, exactly. That'd be good. Yes. A good one to try at home. Yeah. Let's go for another question at Woodlands Primary. Who grew the biggest pumpkin known? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I'm not sure you know this one, David. Who grew the biggest pumpkin known? Yeah, don't know who it was, but it was definitely done in, in America. <laughs> <laughs> they have competitions over there, they do, don't they? They do, definitely, yes. Do you ever try to grow big ones here? We don't grow really big ones here. These are some of the biggest we grow. Yeah, I mean, you'd have difficulty kind of getting that to your car or getting that home, that's wouldn't right. you? That's right, that's the difficult thing, yes. <laughs> um, Let's get some more questions. Let's go to uh, Beacon now, Beacon Primary School. Do you have any questions, Miss Stoke? Hello, my name is Jenna. Which country grows the most pumpkins? Which country grows the most pumpkins? That's a really good question. Which country grows the most pumpkins, David? It is obviously America. I think 80% of the world's pumpkins are grown and consumed in America. Wow. Is it because they eat them or is it because, I mean, they really love Halloween. They celebrate they Halloween big time, don't they? They do. Yeah, both for Halloween and of course, a few days later in this in America is uh, Thanksgiving, of course. So it's also part of that festival too. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, let's get one more question from Beacon Primary School. Hello, my name is Kaiden. If you have a lot of rain, does it spoil your pumpkins? If you have a lot of rain, does it spoil your pumpkins? Really, really good question. If you have a lot of rain, David, does it spoil your pumpkins? It can do. This year has been, we did have a lot of rain in August and it did affect the quality of some of the pumpkins. But usually they're, they're quite resilient product and yeah, we'll keep growing. Is that because they're so close to the ground? Yes, they grow on the ground. So yeah, obviously if there's a lot of rain, yeah, they just lay in the water. It's a fine balance, I'm guessing. Is, you need yes, some rain, yes, but not too much. Of course, yes. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Great questions from all of our schools. Thank you so much, children. Um, I think it's about time we find out how Alan's getting on because Alan's been carving away the whole time that we've been learning about pumpkins. So let's go and have a, a little look how he's getting on, David. How are you getting on, Alan? Uh, it's all finished for you. Let's have a little look. Wow, this is great. I mean, this is one of the biggest ones that you've ever, ever carved. Not quite the biggest, but it's one of the bigger ones, yeah. It's nice and scary. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> what do you think, David? Yes, it's it a really nice looks kind of, 
design yeah. at the front there. Yeah. I, I might give this one a go for Halloween. Um, how long have people been doing this or why do people carve pumpkins, People Alan? have been carving pumpkins for hundreds of years. Uh, some believe it was to ward off evil spirits. Some believe that it was to welcome the good spirits. So it just, it's been lost in transaction, you know, you don't know where it's come from. Okay, but we all tend to have a, have a little go. Yeah. Whether it's very badly like me uh, in Halloween. <laughs> just a bit of fun at Halloween. Yeah. And if you fancy giving pumpkin carving a go at home, and we've got all the instructions that you need on our website, but as I've said with the cooking as well, please make sure you have an adult with you as well, because it can be very dangerous. It's almost time for us to go now, um, but before we do, um, let's find out what you have learned. So let's go over to uh, St. Thomas's School. What have we learned, Mrs. Westhead's class? I'm going to say, I think we've learnt lots, but the children want to show um, want to show you the pumpkins they grew in our own garden here in school, and we've just harvested them. So, um, Seb and Elizabeth have got them. Can you hold them up so everyone can Fantastic. see our pumpkins? This is great. So, David, the children here at St Thomas's have grown their own pumpkins and harvested them. Wow. And they are very good indeed, they are, aren't they? Very good pumpkins, yes, yes. They are great. What do you um, plan on doing with them, Mrs Westhead? Are you going to carve them or are you going to eat them? I don't know. What do you want to do, children? Carve them or eat them? Carve them! Both! Carve them! Eat them! Eat them. Eat them. Eat I think them. they want to do both. That's a good point. Doing both, you can do both. That would be very, very good. Thank you so much, children. Let's go over to Toffwood School now and find out uh, what you've learned and whether you've got pumpkins to show us too. Amen. Joseph just said that you have to wash pumpkins before they go to the shop. So you have to wash pumpkins before they go to the shop. Or yes, they, we do. We don't want muddy, muddy pumpkins on the not. shop shelf, no. do we? No. That's a very, very good point. Thank you so much, children. Let's go up to Woodlands Primary now. Um, I learned that the pumpkins are actually a fruit, not a vegetable. That's really good. That's something that I learned this week. So pumpkins are actually fruit and not a vegetable. Yes, all right. Very, very good indeed. And let's go up to Beacon School now. I found that there are over 100 different types of pumpkins as well as orange because there are the different types of orange and the 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 orange. So there are more than 100 different types of pumpkin they yeah. learn. Yes, yes. That's very, very good indeed. Well, thank you so much, children. You've clearly been learning lots about pumpkins. And I, I love the fact that they've had a go at growing pumpkins and have been carving pumpkins in their classrooms as well. It's almost time for us to go. But first of all, um, the best thing about being a pumpkin farmer, David? Well, really, it's when we see um, we plant small seeds like these uh, in April or May and seeing them develop through the summer from green pumpkins into nice orange pumpkins like these ready for carving and eating. Fantastic, yeah it must be really really mm -hmm. it's a nice satisfactory it is. job isn't Definitely, it? Yes. And Alan, good luck with this busy time of year for Thanks you. Very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> good luck with all the carving. Thank you. Um, and thank you so much children for taking part and hopefully we'll see you on another one of these online field trips but if you'd like to take part in a farm to fork trail all the details that you need are online right now and you can be having lots of fun at a participating farm or producer just like the children you can see at school but from from the pumpkin farm in Norfolk is goodbye. <laughs> goodbye children. Goodbye St Thomas's. <laughs> goodbye Toughwood. <laughs> goodbye Woodlands. <laughs> goodbye Beacon. And goodbye Curtsy uh, C of E School and Ben Weaver School as well. Thank you so much for watching and learning with us.